and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today we're taking a look at what coverage of the Mythic Invitational calls disruptive green aggro. And what we're looking at here is the Stompy deck that MTG Nerd Girl made it into the top 16 of the Mythic Invitational with. For those of you who don't know, Mythic Invitational, most watched magic tournament ever, about 100,000 people watching it on the big days. You may want to go back and check it out. The coverage is on the official Magic YouTube and Twitch pages. But uh, MTG Nerd Girl is, was my testing partner for this event. Actually, that's probably the wrong term since I was not in the event, but she was looking for somebody to help her prepare for the event. I volunteered, she took me up on my offer, used a bunch of my time, and this is one of the decks that we brought. And she is the only person to play this deck at the event, and to my knowledge, the only person to play this deck most places. It's a bit off the radar, and it took a few people by surprise. The general idea of the deck was that we expected most of the professional players to end up on two decks, Esper and Red. And this deck, if you are on a combination of Esper and Red, can be, with decent draws, favored against both, which meant that we were favored in the overall match, since with the format of Duo Standard, you may have to look this up, it's, you may have to read about it if you really want to understand Duo Standard, but basically you get to pick your deck for Game 3 if a Game 3 comes up, and this would be the deck we would pick against a Red Esper combo because we feel favored against both. The other deck she played was Mono Red, and you can see my video yesterday to talk about that because it was good against white and various other creative strategies that might show up. But this deck was completely hers and completely original. She brought it to testing and had to convince me, but as she smashed around my Esper deck, it became very clear that the negates and spell pierces in the deck were very obnoxious to play around and made the Esper deck play a pretty different game. They couldn't just go all in on finding a Wrath and stabilizing from there, or slamming a Teferi to buy time. Often these would get spell pierced or negated, leaving them just dead on board. So, uh, with that new dimension to the battlefield, suddenly Esper was in a much more tough spot, and Mono Red of course has to deal with the giant monsters and the Wild Growth Walker package. The Wild Growth Walker package is kind of difficult for the Stompy deck. What, shouldn't it be Crawl Harpooner? Shouldn't it be Growth Chamber Guardian? Most of the time I would say yes, for this deck, it really does need to find its blue sources. It's a little bit short on blue sources to cast spell pierce and negate every time it wants to. So adding the explore package with Jade Light Ranger and Branch Walker tries to help us find our blue sources more consistently, while also giving us this Wild Growth Walker game plan that can gain a bunch of life and smash a bunch of things against decks like white. And against red, of course, Wild Growth Walker package is very good. Also against red, the Thorn Lieutenant is very good, and against Esper. Again, this was not designed to beat Mono Blue. We did not expect much Mono Blue at the event, and as it turns out, there was only one player on Mono Blue. And it's also not designed to beat Drakes, which um, you can run them over, but sometimes can be a very tough matchup if they have a few key removal pieces. That is another deck that did not show up at the Mythic Invitational, and we were right about that one being left at home. So, with all that said, let's go play some games on Ladder. This is not most likely the ideal build for the ladder as like i said it's really solid against two specific decks that we expected to see a lot it's a metagame call but if we play against some red and we play against some esper today hopefully we'll get to show you the uh that the big green critters backed by a couple tight counter spells can make all the difference so this hand is not going to be able to play a Steely Fun Time because of the island unless we draw perfect, which is frustrating. We do have the Explore Package and possibly into a Hydroid Crisis, but without removal, that's not very good. I'm really tempted to mulligan it. It's my first hand of the day, and I am on the play, so I'm going to keep it, but it's a really tempting mulligan. It's not exactly what you want to see. Our opponent is Ashram. We'll shoot a little hello over there. See how friendly we're feeling today as we as we mess around in the gold ranks. So, I got some sleeves. I got some cosmetics. You may have seen those elves earlier. I got those for free. Uh-oh, the emote spam is on. 
Um, but yeah, uh, so I got those for free because there are some codes you can use to get some emotes. And I will try to remember to put those codes in the description for you, but if not, uh, if I forget, by all means check out Reddit, and by all means check out a few, like several other sources on the internet that shared the codes. Um, yeah, I can't remember them off the top of my head. All right, here we are in game. We can play the Jade Light Ranger. We can also play the Merfolk Branch Walker if we care about our life total too much. Um, we are in sort of an aggro-y matchup, but I think that the Jade Light Ranger to make sure we hit our next forest is crucial because we really want the Steel Leaf Champion to come down and start pressuring this opponent. We have to graveyard this because we don't have the land for it. And oh no, another island. The punishment is real. At least we still have a Hydroid Crassus for next turn to keep moving us towards what we need, which of course is Steel Leaf and Galta someday. And possibly by the time we play the champion, we'll have Negate to protect it. Navern Fane joins the team. This could get annoying. And of course, if we block this, it can gain Indestructible. So blocking it doesn't do us a lot of good. Here is a Thorn Lieutenant. We could try to branch walk our way into another forest, or we could play Hydroid Crassus for two and have a flying threat to apply some pressure to the life total. But I like saving the Crassus as long as I can get away with. So I'm going to lead with this branch walker and hope to find more green land. Probably anything else will get binned. It's a green land, but it takes too long in my opinion, and is not what I'm looking for here. So I'm going to chuck that into the yard. I'm going to play this island. I'm going to attack with this Jade Light Ranger. I don't think my opponent would ever trade their Maverin Fane for it. They might want to block with a little vampire token, but I don't see it. We could also hold up this negate for a Call the Feast. Ooh. But Call the Feast would be a bunch of tiny critters. I've got a big critter. I think I keep playing out the Thorn Lieutenant, and I use the negate to defend my Galta next turn. Because Galta is down to a double green cost if all my creatures survive. I mean, I'm sure that they'll attack with the Vanguard to make another 1-1 one, one creature. Everybody? That's weird. Okay, that's more of what I expected. I'm still not blocking. I need all the power and toughness on the battlefield for the Galta. At some point, I may want to to make the opponent pay for life, uh, as Galta can put more pressure on a bigger life total, on a smaller life total. But not today. The opponent says, oops. I guess they're missing land here. All right, Galta. Time to prove what a big dino can do. And I could send in some attacks here. The opponent might throw some double blocks. I guess if they do that, I'm okay with it. If the vampire board gets shrunk, I'm pretty happy about it. So we could do some attacks like this. The opponent might double block one thing, and I think that's perfectly fine with me. I still don't want to trade this branch walker for a 1-1 one -one, though. Good old vampires. I guess this is what happens in gold. I haven't been gold in a very, very long time. And on stream yesterday, I was playing um, a, Mar a Marari Conjecture Grixis deck that uh, dropped me from gold 3, which was my starting point based on ending in diamond, uh, down to gold 4. So I'm, I'm in uncharted territory. I haven't been here in a very long time. Radiant Destiny. That is a very good negate target. It essentially counters a 3 mana, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 power effect. So... Yeah, that is worth negating for sure. The opponent says good game, and that's it. They're at 8 life with a Galta coming over, and that will do it. We're on the play with Elf and Steel Leaf Champion. I hope we don't flood out from here, and I hope our Steel Leaf Champion doesn't die. But if uh, the game could go to very nice places from a draw like this... Elf on Elf Crime. Wah, 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 wah. I don't know how good that makes a negate. But we'll have to find out. May I draw a Nullhide Ferox, please? Okay, the opponent shocks for Jade Light Ranger. Oh no. That's going to be big enough to block the champion on curve. That is freaking brilliant for our opponent. So... Let's play the Branchy. Another Jade Light Ranger. I do not have a Wild Growth Walker, but I do need good draws, and Jade Light Ranger can help establish those. I don't believe holding up Negate here will be a good play. 
And I don't want to trade my Steel Leaf Champion for the Jade Light Ranger, so we're going to pass the turn back over. The opponent's Wild Growth Walker. Do they also have a land? Maybe they have a Branch Walker, too. Nope, they don't have a Branch Walker, but they may have another Jade Light Ranger. All right, let's go for this Jade Light, try to make sure we find some good stuff. Thorn Lieutenant, how good is that? Um, it's not terrible. It can grow really big. Like, it can hit really hard when you have six mana, which we're sitting on right now. And I can play it and hold the gate open, so it feels all right. Do I attack with my Steel Leaf Champion? I think no. I think what I want to do is trade this Jade Light Ranger for something like this. I should have attacked with the Branch Walker, though. Oh, no. Double Jade Light Ranger, and now finding a Chupacabra. That is a keep for... You must think that's a keep for sure. I can't negate that. But I think we're both going to be trying to build a wall of beef. The Golgari deck is going to be a lot better at grinding than we are. So what we need to do is negate the Vivian Reeds and, or the Fine Finalities and just try to hold it together from there. So here is the Thorn Lieutenant. Which can be the biggest thing on the board. We'll see if the opponent wants to Chupacabra it or not. There's the Vivian Reed. Hell no. Not happening. And that at least gives me a turn to turn the tempo up a little. I could be charging in with the Merfolk Branch Walker. Which gets eaten... Something gets eaten by the Wildgrowth Walker. Either the Jade Light or the Branch Walker if I attack with them. And then there's a Chupa coming out. So I'm in all kinds of trouble. That draw was not good. All right, no blocks. We'll hit him extra hard. We need to draw probably a Hydroid Crassus to get back in the game. Something to refill and also put flying pressure on the opponent would be huge. The opponent still doesn't have great attacks, though those Jade Light Rangers could be getting busy. They're mana constrained. The Spell Pierce might catch something, but it won't catch a find. I don't think I can attack. I think I just have to say go. So now the opponent's going to drop the Midnight Reaper, which means trades are bad for me. Another Wild Growth Walker, which means their Explorers are amazing. Yeah, we got nothing but trouble here. And of course they want this Chupacabra in the graveyard. They want to draw a fresh card, so we just have to take it. We don't have to. We could block and kill it, but I think it would be a big mistake. Here's our Wild Growth Walker. And now if we draw some Explore cards, we don't have to keep blocking. Let's see what the opponent does, though. Oh, they're picking on the Wild Growth Walker. Rightfully so. It's a good play. Pretty smart. This is one of the matchups. Um, if N MTG Nerd Girl had played against Reed Duke, I spent a lot of the evening like with my notebook sketching out how we could possibly win this matchup. And the answer was terrible. <laughs> the answer was that this matchup was absolutely terrible for the green deck. We would have to play red against it, which obviously this deck kind of knows how to take on red. So the Golgari deck is pretty good against red anyway. So it was one of those no-win situations if she had to play against Reed Duke. No-win situation. And this flood isn't helping. I, I gotta say, uh, drawing endless land is not not the solution. Alright, those are coming in. The opponent's just doing the same things. I'm just going to chump block to stay alive. I can still draw Hydroid Crisis, and that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about at this point. We don't really have another trick up our sleeve. There's a, another Wild Growth Walker. The opponent could be much more aggressive, too. They're being... I don't know. They're playing it super cautious. They find a fine finality in Bennett, which tells me they probably have another. And now I feel like they're putting on a little bit of a show. Fair enough. It's your show. You can do whatever you want. Alright, so. Could make our opponent draw a bunch of cards. That doesn't seem very good, but it's something that we have the option to do. With a block like here and a block like here. We could do this. We could kill this Wild Growth Walker. We could take two. 
Uh, or we could just absorb this damage. Nothing wrong with that. All right, fight to the end, right? I do think I'm on zero outs. I do think the position just crumbled as we drew nothing but land off the top and Chupacabra absolutely destroyed us. But it's okay. Uh, like I said, if we had played this round, if we had played Reed Duke, I really didn't see a good way for the deck to pull it off. Watery Grave, so our opponent does play with Hydrate Crassus as well, just to make things worse for us. And they do have two mana up for the Spell Pierce here with the Lanoir Elf over here. So there's nothing I can do about that. I could have played it just to keep my opponent from, from playing the Walker, but I don't think that's a very good play. Not the most impressive thing I, I could have ever seen, right? And wow, explore some more land off the top. Kick it back over. One, two, three, four. All the opponent has to do is attack with everything. They've played super careful so far, so I'm at least going to make them try, and they do. So, uh, no blocks, you win. And, uh, yeah, rough matchup. Rough draw, rough matchup, it happens. Well, this hand is slow and on the draw, but if these find the land, make big things happen. Could be interesting. Opponent opens with a black. I'll just shock myself for this. Get my spell pierce on. Let's catch that search for his Kanto or that thought erasure. Or that treasure map. That's fine too. Sweet, sweet deal. I like it. All right. <clears throat> now let's get our creatures going. Island found off the top. Keeps the branch. He had a 2 1. I will need that land, so it's not that big of a deal. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to need this spell pierce. Let's turn our creature sideways and see if the opponent tries to kill it or takes the damage. Cast down. So I could counter that, or I could just play a different, another creature. So the main things I'm thinking about against a mono black contraption like this is Karn. Also, well, their sweepers are usually like Ritual of Soot, but I may need something like that later. I think letting this branchy go is a good idea. I don't think that defending it is particularly good. Let's play the other branch walker because I want to hold the spell pierce up for a Karn. Uh, yeah. I mean, these things just do keep eking out little advantages, but I think I need to do better. I think I need to do better than continuing to play two mana, three twos, or two ones. Fountain of Renewal. Obnoxious. Turns my clock a little bit differently. All right, so this turn we can Jade Light Ranger or we can Null Hide Ferox. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. Hopefully my editor catches and cuts that out and what I'm saying right now. Okay, hopefully this turn, uh, this turn's interesting because we can Null Hide Ferox. Now, Null Hide Ferox and Spell Pierce is often thought of as a non-bow, since I can't cast a Spell Pierce with the Ferox out here. But against Spot Removal like Black, they usually have to pay mana to turn this off, in which case the Spell Pierce is even more damning. So I don't think I want to play the Ferox this turn. I would want it for next turn. Also, my opponent's in Black. They may have a discard effect. A discard effect that would let me dump the Ferox. I don't know what. Uh, Burglar Rats, Vicious Rumors, something like that. We no longer have any explore creatures in hand, so this is a graveyard for me. Ooh, punished. I do love my Jade Lights though, so I'll keep the I'll keep that Jade Light Ranger. And then here comes the Branchy. Another cast down, that is fine with me. If the opponent has a deck full of murders and cast downs, let's make sure the one on the Nullhide Ferox is the one that gets countered. Phylactery Lit. Can I beat this? It doesn't have Death Touch. Doesn't have Death Touch, so I can Ferox slam. All right, Ferox can't really get through it though, but Galta can. So that's the plan. Got to Galta through this thing. And the opponent is down to one card, although Spell Pierce is out of time now, and there goes Spell Pierce. That's fine, I guess. They're they have no cards. 
And they can't sacrifice the fountain or they lose the lich. So next we're going to Galta Jade Light them and just try to smash through them before they can recover. That's a pretty good draw too. So Jade Light Ranger. Yep, that's all good. Galta. And then I could attack this turn, and if the opponent blocks and kills the Jade Light, they take six. But if I attack next turn and they block and kill a Jade Light, they take 10, 22, which is pretty right on the nose. But if I have this attack next turn and they block a Jade Light, and they took six this turn, they're going to go down to 16. They're going to gain one, go up to 17. Then they take 12, 18. So I could kill them next turn if I attack this turn, but I and they block a Jade Light, and then it takes away their opportunity to block a Jade Light next turn. So in a way, I'm saving a Jade Light, although we don't know what they're going to draw off the top of their deck. I don't know if you were able to follow all that. I tried to talk it out, rewind and watch again. Let me know if I make sense in the comments. It's one of those, it's one of those tough situations about when to throw away a creature attacking and when to wait. But now, see, if the opponent blocks the Jade Light on this attack, they die. So the opponent's going to have to block the Nullhide Ferox and go to one, and then they probably can't recover next turn. As we look at this hand, it's a snap keep for sure. And as we wait for our opponent, I want to tell you about the War of the Spark giveaway box from FlipSideGaming.com. Uh, you always get 10% off any order with the promo code CGB at FlipSideGaming.com and it supports my channel. But right now, through May 6th at midnight, anytime you make a purchase of $10 or more on FlipSideGaming.com and use the promo code CGB, you will be entered to win an entire booster box of War of the Spark, which they will ship direct to your home with the winner drawn uh, after May 6th. So, by all means, use that promo code. You can pre-order Modern Horizons and War of the Spark on FlipSideGaming.com right now. So please go check out that giveaway. Uh, I'm really excited about it. The last one for uh, Ravnica Allegiance did amazingly well. And again, even just using that promo code CGB on FlipSideGaming.com, it supports the channel anytime you need to go out and purchase some magic cards. Well, we finally got Mono Red, but be careful what you wish for. They were on the play with a Shock, a Gitu Lava Runner, and if they have a light up the stage, it's basically a nut draw. Huh? Hey? Oh, straight up skewer you. Very aggressive. Okay, I'm hiding the blue source. I'm playing the Le the Thorn Lieutenant, because playing the Wild Growth Walker here just gets, just gets it killed 90% of the time. Especially with that skewer already cast, they probably have another one. Whereas hitting this Thorn Lieutenant is, uh, oh, they're attacking. It's much harder for them. I'm definitely making the block. And perhaps they have a Goblin Chain Whirler here. It's still, still an even exchange that I'm happy to make. And here is a Steel Leaf Champion. Now, a good question here is going to be whether or not I block Goblin Chain Whirler with my Steel Leaf Champion. And I actually think I do, because the opponent still needs more removal to get through the Steel Leaf. So it lets them trade one for one with the Champion, but I'm still absorbing their removal spells. So, plus I'm keeping them off Spectacle if that's a thing. And absorbing the removal is important. Let's play out another Steel Leaf Champion. If they're out of removal, Next turn, we play Wild Growth Walker and Jade Light Ranger on the same turn. So that slow pass means they do have a Lightning Strike or another Shock. We want them to play it. We don't want them to be holding it up. So we're blocking again. And there it is. See, if they're holding the Lightning Strike, they can kill the Wild Growth Walker in response to the Jade Light Ranger. So there we go. Hammer. Hammer time. Uh, don't need this anymore. Probably. And we hit another land. So the bad news is that we're down to just land in hand. The good news is draws like Hydrate Crassus, Galta, Nullhide Ferox, and um, more Explorer creatures will bury the opponent quickly.
Okay, light up the stage. Sees Runaway Steamkin and Goblin Chain Whirler, but now the attacks are off. Another land off the top is brutal here, though. Oh no. It would be a terrible time to flood. As I think we've drawn about four land in a row now. Steamkin. Not a Chain Whirler, though. And the opponent's just down to some dorks that aren't big enough to get through the Wild Growth Walker, and we're at 17 life. However, any lightning strikes, any kind of instant speed removal they draw is good. And oh, this is why we have this card in the deck, my friends. This is why we play this card. Because late in the game, in these flood situations, you need something to dig you back out. And there you are. Thank you so much, Jellyfish Hydra Beast. The opponent on bricks. We're going to send in the Crassus. Start that clock. Here is our Steel Leaf Champion. Here is our Nullhide Ferox. The wall of beef is growing. Eat your veggies, kids. You can grow up big and strong like the Nullhide Ferox. And that is the game. Finally, Gold 3. We're back. We're back where we started yesterday, baby. Well, this hand is slow, but obscenely powerful, and we might be lucky and draw a two drop. So I'm going to try it. I'm, I'm nervous, but I'm going to try it. If it's mono blue and they have the curious obsession, then the game is already over. If they don't have the curious obsession, then we just kind of smash and try to throw big creatures at them until they can't deal with them anymore. Yep. Anybody else? No. Okay. Well, this is where we find out if they're holding up Essence Capture or Wizard's Retort. Some perfect curve like that. And it's an opt, so that's probably the best thing we could hope for. But it does scare me that there's a Tempest Jin on its way. I should graveyard this elf. I think I should graveyard this negate. Getting into a counter, especially that they can see it, getting into a counter spell war with them is never good. And the thing that you most would want to counter is Merfolk Trickster, which can tap down your creatures for a turn. And yeah, uh, negate doesn't even counter the Trickster. So your counters in this matchup are terrible. Manual taps. Manual taps in mono blue. Yeah, baby. Okay. That's a really good draw. One of the ways that we can race the deck effectively is to have Wild Growth Walker Jade Light Ranger. So if we get to five mana, that will be very good. Plus we get a Ferox here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, hmm. So yeah, Ferox is pretty frustrating for the opponent to get to deal with. They're going to have to put things in front of it. Especially if they don't have a Curious Obsession. Yep, something's happening, maybe? I don't know. I mean, right now they can't just swing in. They, they are not winning the race. Although... Uh, although... A Trickster can certainly have influence there. Feels like he thought really hard about that one. <clears throat> We've got the land, so we can Wild Growth Jade Light, and I think that may be what we wish to do. We can also Galta. I mean, Galta would have to be dealt with next turn, or our opponent would just die. This is a big decision. This is a very big decision. I know one thing for sure. I'm attacking. And if the opponent makes a block, like trades with the Jade Light Ranger, that might influence my decision. We have knocked our opponent to six. The Galta, the Galta is really tempting here, because if we play that, then our opponent, like, they need a Merfolk Trickster. They need specifically a Merfolk Trickster. The Jade Light Ranger, though, I mean, we'd still have a very strong and potentially lethal board, plus a huge life buffer. But the opponent is not going to kill me next turn, so the Jade Light Ranger can come later. Or we could play Jade Light Ranger and Galta. And give up on the Wild Growth plan. I think that might be best. The only thing that that like, loses to is sleep. 
Especially if I can have, yep, okay. And I have another one to go with the Wild Growth Walker. That is perfect. That is really fortunate. Plus, it's really important that this be a 4-3. So it can attack into the Tempest Shins without bad trades. And now we'll see. Does the opponent run sleep? Are they of the old school of mono blue? It hasn't been in the lists for a very long time. Wrong time for a Curious Obsession. You need blockers. But I'm guessing we'll see a Merfolk Trickster here. The opponent's still at 6 life facing all this damage. A Merfolk Trickster would tap Galta, and then they still need to block everything. Not everything. They could let 1 through and go to 2. But they would at least need to block away the Trickster, the Storm Tamer. And they couldn't let one live with a dive down. And here it comes. Not surprising. But now we get Wild Growth Jade Light. Which the opponent, I think, could have stolen the game with a land off the top and this line if we didn't have the other Jade Light Ranger. But before we do that, let's send in the creatures. Let's see how the opponent blocks. Okay, they must have a dive down. Dive down makes a lot of sense here to save the Tempest Shin and kill off a ranger. Down to two life. There's a trampling Galta here. Here is Wild Growth Walker. Here is Jade Light Ranger to gain some life and throw off the clock. <laughs> Another Null Hide Ferox, why not? Actually, I'm going to graveyard it. I What I really want is like a Hydroid Crassus or something of that nature, or another explore creature, as I already have a, an extra Nullhide Ferox. And tempt us in with the draw. So, in MTG Nerd Girl's run at the Invitational, one of the matches that she lost, it was her first loss of the tournament, it came in round 5, so she went 4-0 before losing her first match, which is actually pretty amazing. And the loss was to Mono Blue. And I told her, play your creatures and smash away, and... Uh, they're bigger, so you should be in a decent spot, unless they have a very early Curious Obsession perfect draw. Well, her opponent, who ended up losing in the very finals of the Invitational, uh, he played the turn one Storm Tamer, then on turn two he played double Curious Obsession on the Storm Tamer, and on turn three he played a third Curious Obsession. So, talk about the draw. Talk about the draw we couldn't beat. It's too bad. It's too bad. But... Uh, here we got a little bit of vengeance, beating up, uh, showing that we can power through the mono blue. I hope you enjoyed this video showing off the mono, the blue and green stompy list from the Mythic Invitational that that MTG Nerd Girl used to reach the top 16 and got a 4-0 start with, which was very impressive indeed. I really enjoyed testing uh, this deck for the Invitational and getting absolutely wrecked by her as I tried to line up Esper and Red decks over and over and they got smashed again and again. So, uh, with that said, please remember to use the promo code CGB on FlipsideGaming.com to enter the War of the Spark booster box giveaway that I talked about earlier in the video. And as always, thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel or leave a comment. You can also support the channel on Patreon for special perks. Links are in the description. Our sponsors are hauntedflower.com and flipsidegaming.com. Haunted Flower sells officially licensed MTG apparel and accessories, and Flipside Gaming sells MTG cards and supplies. You can save 10% on either site with the promo code CGB, and it supports the channel at the same time. See you next time for another day in the arena. For now, it's me, it's CGB, signing out.